the next talk concerns some work which was funded by Pete and Co. And I think Simon Malabone and Paul Morgan from Pete are probably in the room. Simon certainly is. Um, the talk's going to be given by Alex Rogers, who is from a company called JDA. JDA. Um, so Alex is going to talk to us about water table controls, perched water and subsoil drainage. Thanks, Jim. Um, my talk probably sort of follows on from, uh, I guess, a couple of other speakers, primarily, uh, I guess, uh, Jeff's comments before about sort of subsoil drainage. Um, I guess I'll be going into a bit more detail specifically, or I guess a lot of, uh, about, about this uh, field test site that we've done at uh, Forestdale, um, but then also sort of getting into sort of looking at some scenarios based on that data. So that, I guess that's the uh, an outline. Um, looking at the field investigation, doing a little, very little bit on the theory, uh, then a sort of calibration and scenarios. Okay, so this is our um, test site. Um, this area here is the uh, uh, Southern River, Wongong, uh, et cetera, urban water uh, management strategy area that the DADA did for uh, Depart oh, Department of Water back in 2002. Um, so Forest Dale right there, Rowley Road down the bottom here, and this uh, test site down here. Um, so and this is also just uh, t Department of Water monitoring board just nearby. Okay, so this is our um, this is our test site. The uh, area was filled, um, I think, about two years ago, um, ready for development. Um, and since then, about two years ago. Um, Cubic Solutions installed two uh, StormTech lines, uh, 80 metres apart, um, which are acting as subsoil drains. And this, this is the Park Avenue drain along here, which drains uh, to the east and also out to the north. Um, we did some uh, did some sa uh, sampling from the site uh, for, for, the, for the, uh, the sand material, which is like a medium coarse sand, and uh, looked at uh, different closer. Uh, different uh, compactions, um, sort of 91, 93, 96% dry density, um, getting sort of various uh, hydraulic connectivities, which uh, uh, might be a bit on the low side for that sort of material. So this is a zoom in of the area. So this actually shows uh, uh, all uh, the bore network that we that we put in. So we had a central line, sort of uh, halfway between. Uh, the two subsoil lines, uh, and then sort of at various spacings um, towards each line, and sort of uh, on the north north south face as well. We also had some control bores over here, and uh, some other bores down to the south. Um, most of these bores here are all uh, shallow, uh, so I should say the uh, the site itself is actually natural uh, surface. Um, is 26 metres HD, and the, the material, the existing material, is, about, is uh, a sandy clay. Um, we've estimated the hydraulic conductivity in, in the matter of uh, about 10 to the minus 4 metres per day. Um, and so, what's happened is that uh, so then sand fills been placed directly on top of that uh, of that clay material, um, and the subsoil lines um, have been also placed on the uh, existing natural surface. Um, so the shallow bores are basically sitting on top of that clay. We also had a couple of other bores um, which were deeper down to the regional water table. So this is a completely perched site. So there's been mounding um, between them, uh, between these. So this is just shows a, a schematic cross section. Um, so the storm tech units, the bores, the regional water table down here, and this is uh, sort of a, I guess, mostly unsaturated zone uh, beneath this perched water table that you, you see developing. In, uh, in winter, so this is actually by, by placing this this fill on, we've actually created this perched water table system in here. So I'm just going to sort of look at the regional AMGL just for a, uh, a very brief minute, uh, because in 2002 we've actually had the uh, AMGL down at 26 meters HD, so it's actually at the surface. Um, uh, but now we're actually sort of seeing the water, water levels actually about three or four metres down. Um, this shows that uh, Department of Water Monitoring Board, which is about a couple hundred metres away, 
So you can sort of see in that uh, period here where, which was used for that um, urban water management strategy, AMGL was about sort of uh, 26 and a half for that ball. But since then, the water tables have dropped quite considerably, um, which might be a result of uh, climate change um, or sort of some other sort of factor as well. We also looked at another bore nearby, uh, which is the same uh, series, and this also sort of shows this dropping water table as well. Um, and this one here, sort of, this sort of really just sort of shows annual annual rainfall for the last oh, 70 odd years at Perth Airport. Um, so the long term average is about 770 millimetres. But if you look at the last 35 years, it's uh, about 718 millimetres. Um, and this year we've only had, I think, well, to, to October we only had 460 millimetres. Um, so this just sort of shows some uh, rough uh, schematic of the, of the site itself uh, during winter this year, um, where we, we've been monitoring. Um, it sort of shows those regional water, um, groundwater contours through here, sort of heading uh, northwest, which is sort of in line with the uh, uh, UWMS. Um, uh, and also sort of shows mining basically in here in between those subsoil lines and the general mounding with water flowing to uh, north and south to the existing sort of uh, natural surface. Um, so in two of our bores, um, this is one of them we put data loggers in, uh, which we're sort of monitoring I think um, daily uh, um, since uh, February this year was, is, is the period of record. Um, and then we've also had uh, actual physical uh, uh, monitoring during the year, every, every, every month as well, um, which picked up all, all the bores. Um, so this one here shows the centre of the mound. Um, and as you can see so from here, back in, uh, I think it's about February, March, got down to a level of about 26 metres HD. Um, and then sort of this is the, this is the uh, hailstorm event. For about 48 millimetres um, in March, um, and then you can still see the water levels rising over an average, or, well, not average, a low winter's rainfall, and here they're hitting a peak of 26.65 uh, um, in, in July. This one here just shows the bore, which is right next to the storm tech units, about uh, two metres away. Um, so it's sort of showing a sort of similar uh, uh, response, similar monitoring. This one here overlays both of them together, so you can sort of see this is the centre of the mound here, and this is on the edge, um, and, and obviously this is the rainfall uh, that was recorded. So you can see that big peak lined up there with that uh, March storm. Um, generally, obviously, I guess because the uh, this ball here is right next to the subsoil, it shows after, after getting rainfall recharge, you see a big, uh, you see faster um, dropping in water levels compared to uh, the slopes of these bores. Uh, the, in, in the centre of the mound, um, and just sort of highlighting it there. So it's like here we get about a 0.7 mounding uh, at the peak there, um, compared to more like about 0.4 in here. So it's, it's about 0.3 of a metre difference across across there. Okay, this just shows a, a cross section uh, uh, east-west through the boards. So you've got subsoils on either side, and just sort of showing the mounding uh, up here in uh, in July. And this is the last uh, one of our last readings in October, so uh, it's fallen sort of quite a bit on the on the edges, um, but uh, the main you still got some. I think it's about uh, 0.3 uh, in October. This just shows a long section uh, north south. So from the uh, the southernmost bore here, you can sort of see uh, water levels there, and then sort of dropping towards that Park Avenue uh, outlet drain over this side over here. It just shows you the, uh, the clay layer. Uh, I guess this is a uh, water level contours in the in July. Um, mapped up, just sort of showing water, water's generally sort of uh, much deeper gradients here, sort of towards uh, for, for, the, for this line, say through here and here, towards going east west towards the uh, the drains. Okay. 
Um, it also shows on here your inverts as well of, 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 of your drains. Okay, we'll just uh, quickly nip through the subsoil drainage. Um, I'll very quickly go through this. If anybody wants to ask me questions afterwards, uh, uh, please feel free. But um, uh, So this one here just shows a, a general schematic. So generally, if uh, when you've got a general uh, water table, um, you might have, when you've got a main thing here, you might have flow sort of going, a lot of vertical components going to the subsoil drains as well as some horizontal. When you've got a, uh, a perch system here or an impermeable boundary, most of your flow has to be horizontal towards those subsoil drains. Okay, so that's just the uh, differential equation for non-steady flow, which we which is we use. This is just the uh, krogenhoff vandeleur marsland equation, which is a uh, solution for subsoil drains for that, for that equation. Um, this just uh, is a method of determining that you can apply intermittent rainfall and it will give you a time series result. Okay, so we just look at the uh, calibration of the data. Um, so what we did was that we used that uh, Krogenhoff equation um, and uh, applied it using um, rainfall data from the Ancatel station, rainfall station, um, and basically looked at trying to match um, so the, re so the actual recorded data is in the pink there, and our estimated uh, values are in, are in, are in blue. Um, so it's a, it's a completely bare earth site. Um, so we used the rainfall recharge for about 80%. Um, there's no uh, vegetation or whatever, so there's very little loss through uh, evapotranspiration. Um, we estimated the uh, specific yield to be about uh, 0.2. Um, and, but we also, so we re readjusted uh, the specific yield and uh, hydraulic connectivity to, to try and sort of match these, this data. Um, and uh, so we used 0.2 for that and about 40 metres a day for, for our hydraulic connectivity, um, which is a little bit on the, on, on the higher side. We're probably expecting sort of that some material sort of, say, 20 metres a day or something like that. Um, but. Um, so we sort of, the actual calibration is sort of uh, fairly good. We've got sort of uh, root mean square error of about uh, nine centimetres. Um, and uh, again, this is our uh, uh, storm event, which I'm not quite sure if it was actually 100 year for that duration, but uh, in, certainly in some parts of uh, the Perth metro area where it was. If we try and play around with other parameters, to so say, say, use a K of five metres a day, just doesn't work. Um, similarly, if we, use, if we adjust the specific yield, yeah, we don't get a particularly good calibration either, which is why we sort of, uh, we've, we've went with this. It's probably not the, the only solution um, using these parameters, but um, we sort of thought it was calibrated pretty well. So we just go into some uh, drainage uh, scenarios. Uh, I guess scenario one, we looked at, um, so we, we use the recharge uh, rainfall recharge of 80% for our, our calibration. I guess when we're putting hazing on though, it's probably more like about, uh, say, I think about 40% is what we, we, we generally use. Um, and if we had like a, a very wet year, uh, which these days doesn't happen very often, but if we use um, double the rainfall that we got this year, which is about just over 900 millimetres, say, we obviously get exactly the same set of curves. So we get a point, point 0.7 metre rise in the middle of winter, just from just from uh, rain, just from rainfall, uh, and that's obviously at this the centre of the main we're talking about here. So if we then apply an average rainfall, so going back and look, we had a 720 millimetres, 720 millimetres was about average. If we applied that average at that 40% uh, recharge with those same coefficients in an 80 metre drain spacing, which we've uh, got on site. And it's quite often used um, at the, for, uh, when subsoils are within the ro road reserve. We end up with about a 0.5 metre max main in the middle there. If we then uh, look at, if we sort of say, well, that's no, no, a bit higher than we want, perhaps uh, if we look at, say, well, putting subsoils down the back of lots, so we've got a 40 metre drain spacing, then our main reduces down to about 0.2. 
Um, so you can see that it, it does have quite a significant impact, and um, it's gone from yeah, 0.5 to 0.2, so sort of a bit of reduction. If you don't want to have uh, subsoils down the back of your back of your lots, then perhaps an, another scenario might be, well, we'll keep the same 80 metre drain spacing, but we'll have lot connections. So we've got much more runoff, a lot less infiltration. So if you look at only 15% rainfall recharge, and we end up again with about a 0.2 metre remaining between the subsoil drains. So this is just a, really a summary of that. So as you can see, sort of uh, so, so 0.7 metre rise for, for the high, high rainfall year. Um, just an average rainfall year, 0.5, and then you can reduce it down to about 0.2. In, uh, um, by various management options. Um, now, most of the time, of course, we like to use, say, design storms and to see what happens in design storms. So, quite often, we'll use, um, we'll apply design storm information um, for, the, for this, the same equations, uh, and to we use generate these uh, these curves here. So, we've got say a hundred year curve at the top for different durations storm durations and for different ARIs. So say using an average year, we've got a, uh, in an 80 metre spacing, we've got a mounting of uh, uh, 0.5. So this one here, this point there is a, a the two year 30 day. So really if we look at an average year, we might be a, a, a two year, say winter rainfall, maybe sort of 120 day, which would, which would basically put us in here. So that's almost equivalent. So if we're look, just looking at the standard um, standard uh, design storms, 100 years, 72 hours, about 0.3 of a rise. So we could say that if we're in the middle of an average winter, we might have 0.5 of a metre rise. And then if we've got a 100-year storm event um, of, of a 72-hour duration, then we might have an extra 0.3 on top of that. Um, we might also have, and uh, like several speakers have mentioned as well, if you, you can't discount... Um, uh, capillary fringe as well, so that would be um, certainly on top of your average winter's rainfall, but not necessarily on top of your uh, storm events. So just uh, in conclusion, um, so when you add film above a clay surface, um, you will get a perched water table developing. Um, partic well, uh, particularly if your uh, regional water table is lower. Um, in perch systems, long duration events uh, are quite often critical. Um, if you have a very wet year, like you have 0.7 metre rise, which is much higher than the 100 year 72 hour. Um, storm, we found that the storm tech units can function adequately as a subsoil drain, plus they also provide uh, storage during storm events as well. Um, subs the stormwater and subsoil drainage. We can, we can design those basically to manage our mounding, so we can put them down the back of lots. We can, um, yeah, increase, we can have lot connections and things like that to basically reduce our, our mounding from our winter event, um, which is yeah, what I've said here. So, just uh, acknowledgements, for, I guess, uh, firstly, the Peak Oakford for basically providing the funding for, for, for the work we've been doing. Um, and certainly I think uh, the data that we've got from the field test is, um, I guess uh, to our knowledge, it's, it's maybe the only one of its kind in WA, um, actually collecting data from subsoil drains um, over an average winter's rainfall. Um, also to uh, Gil Alexander, for, uh, Sterling Consulting, for basically support for us during the project. Cubic Solutions for the supply and installation of the storm tech units. Um, and uh, I guess for myself, uh, to the JDA staff for the actual collection of the data um, and uh, analysis as well. So.